Hey, I'm Tanaya Morelli with Nightingale Charters here in Southeast Alaska. Today I wanted to show you how we rig for lingcod, rockfish, halibut. Um, this is kind of more specific towards fishing rock piles uh, and lingcod. Um, what we're dealing with here is, uh, first of all, tackle-wise, I love glow color. That's my go-to. My go-to is these Delta Tackle Halley Hogs, uh, 16 ounce Delta Tackle jig, bullet jig. Um, and uh, most importantly, the link between you and the fish is your line. All the braided line companies out there claim that they have high abrasion resistance, but there's no match for lingcod teeth and big rock piles and overhangs and things like that that will shear any good braided line off in a heartbeat. So what I like to do is I have these tied up, usually have about a dozen of them on the boat ready to go for clients. Uh, you could tie this directly to your main line. I use an 80 pound test braided line. Uh, and then I'll put a top shot on there, which is about 120 pound test mono. And a real simple rig, about a six foot leader. Uh, the reason I pre-tie all this stuff is because it's really quick to interchange. If I do break something off, I don't have to re-tie everything together. They're already pre-made and I can just run a fresh swivel on my main line on my rod and then I can connect this to it. Uh, this is what has the abrasion resistance. There's no match to good monofilament line for abrasion resistance. But when you're fishing deep water, and you're using monofilament as your main line, you have so much stretch, you just really can't get a good hook set. So what I like to do is utilize the convenience of good braided line because of the hook sets and low stretch, and then the abrasion resistance of a good mono as a top shot. You could run 80, you could run 100. It doesn't really matter whatever you're comfortable with. The heavier the line is, uh, the more life you're going to get out of it. We're fishing sharp pinnacles. Uh, you're catching fish with really sharp teeth. So uh, I haven't found any reason why a heavier line doesn't, it doesn't deter the fish, uh, in my opinion. So whatever you're comfortable with, I believe this is actually 150 pound. It's just what I had on the boat to show you today. So I use about a two odd barrel swivel, crimp, and you can tie these if you want, real simple about a six foot leader down to another crimp and a corkscrew swivel, about a two aught corkscrew swivel there. So real simple setup. This is what takes the brunt of the fish bite. This is what's hitting the rocks. This is what's dragging on the bottom when you're bouncing. This will save you a lot of heartache in lost gear and lost fish. It's always the big ones that get away, trust me. So. We have this, we have our bullet jig here. This is 16 ounce. This is plenty sufficient for fishing up to 250, 300 feet if the tide's not ripping on you. Uh, I like this Delta design. Uh, a lot of these designs come with a lead barb here to hold your, your jig on, your plastic jigs. They don't usually hold up. They don't usually work. This design is really efficient, works well and you won't have your skirt getting ripped off every time you pull up. Uh, we do get a lot of smaller fish that'll hit these tails and they just tend to pull them down and you'll have it hanging halfway off of your hook here. They, these come with a hook protector on here. Make sure you remove that before you go fishing. <laughs> Take that off. Uh, and honestly, the most dangerous part of this jig is that point right there. You're gonna be focusing on this hook and you're gonna stick yourself on there. So just be careful not to get that in your hand. Uh, these Delta Halley Hogs, this is a 10 inch. Uh, they come in a multitude of colors. I like Glow, again, it's just my go-to. Um, and they're a good durable plastic. A lot of the other manufacturers out there have cheapened up the plastics that they're using. They fall apart, you don't get the life out of them. This is a scented model. Uh, they just work great. They're pre-bored, so you're not splitting your jigs uh, when you're trying to insert it into here, into your jig head. So. It's real simple. I like to turn the tails backwards. I find that they don't hang up on your hook quite as much. Uh, you will have problems occasionally with the tail getting hooked on your hook. Just check your bait every once in a while if you're not getting bites. Uh, so anyways, I just like to match up where it needs to come out. Slide it in. 
real simple. This is where you're most likely to stick yourself. Pop it out where you need it, slide it up, and there you are. You're set up, ready to go. Now, <clears throat> once you got that hooked on there, we can go ahead and attach our corkscrew swivel. Real simple, twist it on there. This swivel will baffle most people of how to take it on and put it on and take it off. It's super simple. It's just a corkscrew working around there. Some of them are tighter than others, so if you have a larger eye, the actual eye itself is larger. Sometimes they're a little tough to get on, but they will go on. So real simple, click it in there, turn it, and there you are. Set up, ready to go. Now, the other thing about these is sometimes you'll look at a jig and go, ah, it's got stick on eyes, you know, it's they're not gonna hold up. These hold up really well. In fact, the eyes on this jig hold up better than the powder coating. Here's some older ones here that we have so beaten on the rocks that they've actually mushroomed out eyes are still on them still work tails are ripped off these have fished numerous days out on the ocean and they're still working still catching fish still sharp skirts are still hanging on tight same thing here this one has been used so much that the paint's gone but the eye is still pretty much all intact so the glue that they're using the quality of these jigs they're they're good they're as good as you're going to find so anyways, that's pretty much it. You're fishing rock piles. Uh, you want this to drop, hit the bottom, and I jig it up about three feet and just work the bottom. And you're always checking for the bottom when you're using this. You're always hitting the bottom, then come up a little bit. You don't want it dragging on the bottom because you will snag these up in the rock piles. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. If you want to tip it with a little bait, that's easy. Uh, I like to use a pink salmon or uh, chum salmon and skin, with some skin on it that'll hold on the hook really well you can use herring but it doesn't stick as well uh, to the hook for long term and when you have to reel up 250 feet to check your bait uh, it gets tiring so something that stays on the hook well octopus is also really good that'll stay on your hook well and that's pretty much it attach that to your main line on your rod and you are ready to go